Okay. And um, yeah, wait, I'm just going to split this maybe so that you can still see the chat. If anyone has a question. Okay, so this week is about pandas again. And um, yeah, this week's homework was a little more about uh, analyzing the data and um, yeah, also a bit about missing data. Okay, and someone's typing, so I'm just gonna wait for that. Oh, sorry, yeah, I share my screen. Okay, so um, I just had the GitHub page, the GitHub readme open for the current homework. Um, that was all. So yeah, this was about pandas again, and we have three tasks here. The first one is just about loading the data and um, also merging the two data frames that are provided. And uh, yeah, here we have these two data frames. They are from the Robert Koch Institute um, in Germany, which is, I guess, the main institute in Germany uh, that is collecting the data about the COVID-19 pandemic um, in Germany. And uh, yeah, these, this data is freely downloadable from the RKI website. Uh, I believe it's this link. So um, yeah, they just provide this data set for anyone um, to download. And for this task, I renamed the, um, the columns to be in English so everyone can understand what this is about. And I also removed some of the columns here. So um, GitHub Classroom actually has a limitation that the maximum file size is 10 megabytes and the whole data set is I think about 30, meg uh, 30 megabytes. So I had to remove a bit of that, but I tried to remove only those columns which were not that interesting anyways. But one that I did remove is this Landkreis or the county. And um, yeah, I did this on purpose so that you have to uh, fill that in yourself using this RKI county CSV file. And in that file, um, I can just open that. I hope GitHub can, yeah, GitHub can nicely render your CSV files. Um, in this file here, um, you just get a mapping from um, different IDs to actually, um, for example, the um, the city here, um, or the, I don't know how you say that in English, the, the Kais of the city. So the, like the surrounding area. And um, as I said in the task description, you can use this RS column uh, in here to then do the mapping between the county and um, the county ID. So this RS, I'm not sure what this stands for, is the ID of a certain county. And um, yeah, this county ID is already is also present in this RKA COVID-19 um, dataset. And okay, apparently, doesn't want to render this one properly. But in the raw, you can see at the top here, we have this ID county column, and this is the one that you should match. So um, yeah, for that, you have to use the merge function. Um, as I said in the description here as well, I think. Um, yeah, or at least I said, you have to perform a left outer join on that, which will preserve all the rows in this RKI COVID-19 data set and then just assign the corresponding counties to um, yeah, to the right IDs and the county IDs in this COVID-19 data set. Um, okay, so you had to do this merge and um, just use this county um, column from the RKI counties data set. Then are there already questions about this part, about the merge maybe? Um, Anything I should explain again regarding that. Um, then furthermore, you had to um, also remove this age group two column since it only contains basically missing data and we don't need this. And um, yeah, this was just to um, give you another small task um, of yeah, removing one column. Then task two was actually using this data or is actually using this data since it's still going on. And here you had to um, 
turn the already existing data from this age group column into categorical data. And um, yeah, the age group values are currently um, basically strings of intervals. And it tells us maybe we can open this again. Still not gonna render, is it? No, <laughs> of course not. Um, so in the raw, this one, for example, would be one of these, um, yeah, of these intervals, these age intervals, and it's just a string, so we can't actually do anything with that. Um, but I didn't want you to uh, turn this into an actual interval category, um, which would also be possible with pandas, but to just use the strings as categories um, and have that as an ordered um, categorical column. And um, yeah, additionally, you also have these unbekannt or unknown values in there. And this is basically missing data again. And um, since if you just convert this to a categorical column, then you still have this unknown um, value in there. And that kind of messes up the ordering since unknown values are not before like 20 or after 20 years or yeah, you can't really order unknown values. So I said you should just uh, yeah, replace these unknown values by uh, not available. So by the pandas NA um, such that you don't have an actual unknown value in your categories. Okay, and then finally you should just return um, return the series, which is now categorical. And then the last task was about, um, yeah, creating a resampled representation of the, um, of a subset of this data set. And, uh, it got the values as parameters. So it got a data frame as the parameters, uh, as a parameter, and it just contained the number of new of cases for a certain date. Uh, or the new cases of a certain date, the uh, the number of new deaths for a certain date, and the number of um, recovered for a certain date. And then what you're supposed to do is, um, yeah, take this data frame with the date time index and resample it such that, um, yeah, it just always includes seven day um, time frames basically, um, such we have such that we have weekly data and you were supposed to sum up uh, the number of cases uh, for the week um, so that in the end there should be 19 weeks of data and um, yeah i guess if there aren't any questions about this um, then i guess we're pretty much done here and um, by the way, I wrote this uh, last bit here in the end um, to um, yeah, play around with the data, get familiar with it, and uh, maybe plot some things because um, yeah, pandas plotting is a great way of um, easily visualizing your data since you have such a wide range of different plots available. And uh, yeah, you can actually get some very interesting plots out of there and um, yeah, you can replicate the plots that are all over the news and you can try to do some more filtering on that and maybe um, yeah maybe split the data up into the different age groups and have a look at how many cases there are for younger people or for uh, older people and just yeah work with the data and this will uh, just make you more familiar with pandas as well since just yeah working with it it will help a lot with uh, yeah, understanding how the functions work, understanding the data as well, and just getting into this, um, yeah, getting a feel for how you can work with uh, tabular data. Okay, but no one's typing. I don't see any more questions. So I guess this is pretty much everything I wanted to cover. Um, so yeah, just wait a bit more. If 
any questions still come up? Okay. Um, the question, if I can say something about the dot .log, dot .ilog, or dot .index again. Sure, I can talk about that. Um, yeah, let me just open up JupyterLab again for that, so I can um, show you in there. I share my screen again. All right. So um, I just create a new notebook maybe so we can have a look in there. Um, we'll import pandas and then I'll just use a data set from, uh, yeah, from last week's homework. Um, I'll use, um, which one was, which one would be suitable? I guess subject all new should work. So if we just read this, uh, we now have this um, data set. And to yeah, talk about this dot .log and dot .ilog, I just um, make one of these columns as an index. Um, and I'm not sure which one would be good. Let's just use subject ID. Doesn't really matter since it's just an example, which is not about the data. So now our subject ID is the um, index column. And now let's also just save this in this variable. Okay, so this is our data. We have a couple of columns and uh, we have this index subject ID. And this index is basically an identifier for each row. And um, you already know the indices from NumPy, for example, which are just integers counting up from zero until the last element in the array. And um, yeah, pandas also has this uh, kind of index, this integer index starting at zero and just going until the last one. Um, and this is what you use in iLog. So um, iLog is the way you do the index location. And this index refers to the actual like counted row. And this counting starts at zero. So if we do uh, df.ilog, then we'll have to use the square brackets, not the parentheses, um, since this is actually a different representation of the data um, using the index. And here we just put in the index first. And um, this is an integer starting from zero and going onto the last row. And if we just do zero, for example, we we'll get this first row here. And um, yeah, this first row is just um, yeah the zeroth element in this data frame, basically. Um, we can also do multi-indexing here, or not multi-indexing, but um, yeah, index in different dimensions uh, with a comma, for example. And since this is still iLog, it's also going to use the index location in the second dimension. And the second dimension are the columns. So now we can also access um, a column using um, this iLock as well. And um, this starts at zero as well. And it doesn't code this index column. And um, yeah, if I just use this zero, one, two, three, the third column here, it's going to give me this reading response time column. And since we still have the zero in here, it's just going to give me this 7,497, um, which was the value at index zero in the row and column three. Okay, so this is how iLock works. Now, if we want to use lock instead of iLock, this is not going to use uh, the indices anymore. Um, it's going to use the pandas index and the column names. So 0, 03 would not work because, uh, yeah, we have a key error. Um, it tells us 0 is not in there and uh, 0 is actually not in our subject ID here. So this will actually use this index column that you can already uh, that you can see here, and not the index counting from zero on. 
So here we would have to use uh, the actual value index index column. And if we use 51, for example, the one that we can see here, we'll get all the rows where the index is 51. And note here that uh, you can already see that we can have um, the same index for multiple rows. And then this will actually give us all the rows where the index is this certain value. And with the iLock, we can't get multiple rows if we just specify one number. And this is since we have a strict mapping, um, like accounting from zero up to the number of rows in iLock, but lock will give us all the uh, rows here where the, um, yeah, where the index column has the value 51 in this case. Now we can also do um, a second dimension here. And since we now do, um, since we now have the actual like locations in the, in the data frame and not the indices anymore, we'll have to use the string as the second one. And this will give us all the values in this reading response time column where the index value, so the value in the index column basically is not really a common column, but in this index yeah, kind of column um, is 51. And um, yeah, these are just two different ways of indexing a data frame in Pandas. And um, yeah, you were also asking about the dot index. And what dot index gives us is just this basically index column, this kind of column. And um, we can see that in this case, this is an in64 index, meaning that we have um, yeah, we have integers as indices, but they still can have the same value. And this df.index is basically all the values that you can, uh, that you see in this um, column of the subject ID here. And it's pretty much the same as doing uh, df.trial. And this would give us all the values in this trial column here. But um, actually doing df.trial is not really good practice since um, yeah, we have this way of using the square brackets again. And here we input a string and this will not cause any problems ever. But if we do dot trial, for example, this could break stuff if trial were, for example, a keyword in, um, in pandas or in, in Python in general. Um, I can also demonstrate this. Um, if I just maybe add a column to our data frame and call this, I don't know, def, like the defined keyword in Python, set the values to just, uh, just to zero, print this head again. So you can see we now have this def column at the end, has zero values. And then um, if we access this using the square brackets, we get all the values just fine. But if we were to do df.def, this tells us this is invalid syntax because def is a keyword and um, Python doesn't expect something yeah, that there is a dot before this def keyword. And this is the reason that you should not really use this dot um, something, dot column name a syntax for accessing columns since this can lead to errors. And if you can't use this all the time, then um, yeah, your code will not be consistent in itself and that's a bad thing as well. So yeah, it's better practice to do this with a string in the square brackets and access values that way. But that's not really regarding um, the iLock, lock and dot index. Um, did my explanation of those three things suffice? Or do you still have questions about that? Okay, perfect. And I think that also was uh, kind of a source of confusion in the last homework, since um, you had to use dot lock and then put in the indices and you couldn't do um, like just filtering out where the, the answer um, correct column was true. It was actually the other data set, I think. Um, subject filler? No, it's not called that. Yeah, it is. Maybe it doesn't have this column. Yeah. 
Okay, so it was with this data set here and you weren't able to just um, filter out the rows where answer correct is true. Since we do that, so DF is now our new data set, uh, the one from task two. And if we just do this, um, then we get all the, call, uh, all the rows where this is true, but um, the task asked to get all the indices where answer correct is true. And here now we only have the rows um, where the actual value is true. But if we access dot index from here and then use this index in a df dot log, we'll get different values. And we can just um, do dot head on this and then do this again, but the other way. like this, um, you will get different values. And from this here, it's not apparent, I think, but, and I hope I'm not um, mistaken right now. Okay, maybe I am. <laughs> um, so maybe it did work. I think, well, there was something um, about that that you couldn't do and that was maybe like the more intuitive way of doing it but which didn't work and uh, I'm not 100% sure anymore what that was but it had something to do with uh, you having to use dot .lock um, instead of just this normal um, masking or oh, I think in note was um, I forgot to set the index column to stimul index and the index is now of course important for this since we're dealing with uh, this lock and lock uses the index column and um, yeah now this doesn't work anymore so if we just print the head of that again um, yeah, we can already now see that this is different. And here we have um, multiple rows with uh, index 49. And here we only have one row with index 49. And we get multiple rows here because there is one row um, where answer correct is true and the index is 49. And if we take this dot index, you can already see the 49 is in here. And then if we use these indices, to access our whole data frame, it's going to give us all the rows where the index is 49 and all the rows where the index is 68, no matter if answer correct is actually true or not. So this was a source of confusion in the last homework. Okay. But then if there are no further questions, I think we can call it a day. Okay. So then see you next week, I guess. And goodbye.